So now, so now what's next? Well, I need to give you a, uh, uh, a little tour, a very brief tour of the zoo of what are known as discontinuous functions. So sort of everything else that's not continuous. So the first example here, let, let me just write it down here, is, is jump discontinuities. So what would a jump discontinuity be? Well, we've actually already seen it. The jump discontinuity is the example that we had right there. This is when the limit from the left, left and right exist but are not equal. Okay, so that's that's uh, the, the uh, as in the example. Right, in this example, the two limits, one of them was one and one of them was two. So that's a jump discontinuity. And this kind of issue of, of whether something is continuous or not is, uh, may seem a little bit technical, but, but it is true that, um, that, that, that people have worried about it a lot. The, the uh, Bob Merton, who was a, a, a professor at MIT when he did his work for the Nobel Prize in economics, was interested in this very issue of whether stock prices of various kinds are continuous from the left or right in a certain model. And that was a very serious issue in developing the model that, that uh, priced uh, things that our hedge funds use all the time now. So left and right really can mean something very different. Uh, in this case, left is the past and right is the future. And it makes a big difference whether things are continuous from the left or continuous from the right. Uh, right, is it true that the point is here, here, somewhere in the middle, somewhere else? That's a serious issue. So uh, the next example that I want to give you is a little bit more subtle. It's what's known as a removable discontinuity. And so what this means is that the limit from left and right are equal. So a picture of that would be you have a function which is coming along like this and there's a hole maybe where who knows either the function is undefined or maybe it's defined up here and then it just continues on. All right, so the, the two limits are the same. And then of course the function is begging to be redefined so that we remove that hole and that's why it's called a removable discontinuity. Now let me give you an example of this, or actually a couple of examples. So these are quite important examples which we'll be working with in just a few, in a, in a few minutes. Uh, so, so the first is the function g of x, which is sine x over x, and the second will be the function h of x, which is 1 minus cosine x over x. So we have a problem at g of 0. g of 0 is undefined. On the other hand, it turns out that this function has what's called a removable singularity, namely the limit as x goes to 0 of sine x over x does exist. In fact, it's equal to 1. So that's a very important limit that we'll work out uh, either at the end of this lecture or the beginning of next lecture. And similarly, uh, the limit of 1 minus cosine x divided by x, x goes to 0, is 0. All right, maybe I'll 
put that a little farther away so you can read it.